case you did not understand it still, this is just for you. 75 kilogram person climbs stairs, gaining 2.50 meters in height. Find the work done. Work done is MGH because he's giving himself potential energy. 75 times 9.8 times 2.5 gives you 1,838 joules. Considering significant figures, it's 1.8 times 10 to the power 3 joules. That's the answer to the first one. Takes us to the second. Let's do this together. Calculate the work done on a 1,500 kilogram elevator car by its cable to lift it 40 meters at constant speed, assuming friction averages 100 Newton. All right, somebody tell me the idea. Because there's also friction there. Do you see that? Basically, you have to find the kinetic. Hmm? Uh, it's not talking about speed there. Again, isn't it being lifted up? So there's MGH, right? But on top of that, you also have to think about work done against friction. Okay. So the A part. I'm writing FD cos theta. See, I'm doing both of those together. Do you notice that? Because I already have mg times, instead of h, it's d. That's all. That's the difference. mg times d plus friction times d. That makes sense. I'm just doing them together. mg times d is potential energy. Work done against friction is the frictional force multiplied by d. So I'm doing them together. Mass is 1,500 times 9.8 plus friction is 100. Add them up, multiply by 40. Now that gives 5.92 times 10 to the 5 joules. You have to be careful here. First, you'll have to multiply these two, right? And whatever you get, add 100, and then together multiply that with 40. That will give you the answer. Question, say? What is the work done by the gravitational force? We know it's not the gravitational force that is taking the object up. If it is going down, yes. So therefore, how will you answer? You multiply the, the force that came down from part A by the displacement. Mm -mm, because that also includes friction. This part is only asking you about the work done by gravitation alone. So it would be? MGH, isn't it? But, okay, wait. Work done by gravity. You see the negative there? Why the negative? Because it's going on the opposite. Exactly. It's going against gravity, right? Therefore, the negative. Work done by the gravitational force. Because we know it's not gravitational force. So that's only MGH. 1500 times 9.8 times 40. That will give you minus 5.88 times 10 to the 5 joules. And then the C part says, what's the total work done on the lift? Do you know what the symbol stands for? Summation, net force, yeah? Okay, net force. Net force, what's the net force in this case? Hey, you uh, some look. Some machine is trying to apply a force to take it up, isn't it? And gravity is applying that much force down. So what's the net force? Yeah, that's why you see a zero there. Is that meaningful now? Because the the electric motor is applying a force up, and gravity is applying an equal force down. Net force is zero. So when you consider everything together. It's a constant speed, too, remember? Yeah. If it's constant speed, what's the acceleration? Mm -hmm. Zero. Even that way, you can get the net force as zero. Because net force is mass times zero. acceleration, and the acceleration is zero. zero. So network is zero. OK. Network is zero.
So either way, I hope you understood that, didn't you? Constant speed, no acceleration. Net force is zero. Therefore, net work is zero. That takes us to the next one. All right, calculate the work done by an 85-kilogram man who pushes a crate four meter up along a ramp that makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. He exerts a force of 500 newton on the crate parallel to the ramp and moves at a constant speed. Again, constant speed, right? Be certain to include the work he does on the crate and on his body. Because he's not only lifting the crate, he's also lifting himself up, isn't it? Both of them are going up, okay. Here it is, the diagram. Watch it. Try to get it. Slow this down. What are those two forces that have come up there? What is this force is the force that he's applying, isn't it? This is the component of the weight. Mg sine theta. Are you used to that? Yes. So this is like a review now. That is the force he is applying. Okay. Work is Fd, force multiplied by displacement. That is friction. You see that? That is friction against the motion. So total force... Let me stop it. Total force down is mg sine theta plus friction. Do you see that? That means to move this, he has to apply a force equal to the sum of these two. Come on. These are the two forces acting down, right? Yeah. He has to apply a force that's equal to the sum of these two. So I'm going to add them up. mg sine theta plus friction. But friction is already given us how much? So it's a force of 500 Newton times D. Okay. What happens if it goes, goes zero? We don't need the cost here because... It's horizontal. Yes. Is it horizontal? He is pushing it. Look at that. How is he pushing? All right. Let me stop. See this word? Where is that? Here, look. How is he applying the force? It's parallel to the ramp, but the ramp is... Horizontal. I thought horizontal was... Uh, no. Horizontal is something else. Look, this is horizontal. Yeah. And it's making an angle of 20 degrees. That's right. We have already considered that. Mg sine theta. Mg cos comes in only when you find the normal force. See that? Normal force is Mg cos theta. Let's finish it and then I'll explain again. Because I'm in the middle of recording. Okay. 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 So 85 times 9.8 sine 20. That's 85 is the mass. 9.8 is G sine 20 plus 500. It's too slow. Times how much did he move it? Four. Four. Okay. So when you do that, three point one four three. I mean 3.14 times 10 to the 3. Okay, I'll set up the problem and see how far you can go, all right, after that. A shopper pushes a grocery cart 20 meters at constant speed on level ground against a 35 Newton frictional force. He pushes in a direction 25 degrees below the horizontal. You should manage to draw this diagram. What's that? What's that? The force that he applies, isn't it? Because he said 25 degrees below the horizontal. So that's the horizontal. That's the force he's applying. That angle must be 25 degrees. Yes. All right, so I'm trying to show that point so I can show the forces on that point. What is that? Yes, yes, what is that? Friction, because friction is always... Opposite of the motion, isn't it? That's friction. Okay, that's my grocery cart. I don't want to draw a cart. I just want to draw a free body diagram. So it's like a point. So that's friction. Come on. 
That's going to take so much time if I slow it so much. Yeah. What is the FA? Applied force. The force he's applying. Okay. And I didn't complete it. I want somebody to tell me what this component would be. How much would this be? This is FA. Is this the adjacent side or the opposite side of the right triangle here? Look at this right triangle. Can you see the right angle triangle here? Yeah. Imagine adjacent is always cos. Okay. Adjacent is cos. That's why that's FA cos 25. Now I got what I wanted. I know that he's applying FA cos 25, which is the component of this, isn't it? Along this direction. Yet he has to overcome friction. So now I know the work done. Oh, look, but before you go there, look at the A part. It's only asking you, what's the work done on the cart by? Friction. Only friction, okay? So you multiply friction. Friction, which is 35 Newton. Didn't you see 35 there? Friction. I hope you won't ask me why... I'm taking friction as the applied force. I think I tried to explain that last problem, didn't I? Because it's moving at constant speed, the force that he applies is exactly equal to friction. Did you get that? That's why it's 35. Otherwise, you get confused, say, ah, what? Yeah, it is the same. That's minus 700 joules because he's doing work against friction. Actually, cost 180. Where did I get the cost 180 from? Look at the direction. Isn't he moving it this way? And isn't friction the opposite? Don't you think the angle is 180 here? Yeah, yeah that's why. And cos 180 is negative. Okay. If you do work against, it's negative. What's B? What is the work done on the cart? Good. By the gravitational force. Let's get it. Work done on the cart by the gravitational force. Let's see who will get it. Is he moving this cart against gravity? No. Isn't he moving it on level ground? Come on. Is he taking it up? No. Look, I underlined on level ground. So, theta is 90 degrees. I already told you. He is not doing work against gravity. And I'm trying to show you again how I get that 90. Isn't he moving it this way? Mm -hmm. And gravitational force is straight down, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the angle is 90. Just keep in mind, if an object doesn't move up against gravity, no work is done. So that is clearly understood, right? It's on level ground. But in the beginning of the, the other exercise that you gave us as an example, the mg cos theta, we didn't take it into consideration because it was cos Okay, we part. Work done by the shopper. That's what the S stands for. I just wrote 700 joules. That's it. Because the network must be zero, isn't it? He's moving at constant speed. Network must be zero. We already know friction is doing that much. Therefore, he has to do exactly the opposite of that. So the network is zero. Why should the network be zero? Because the net force is zero, isn't it? Net force is zero, yeah, everything. D, D, find the force the shopper exerts using energy considerations. Hmm, find the force the shopper exerts using energy considerations. We, see, look, we got the work that he does, didn't we? Do we know the distance? Where's the distance? I can't even see. Where is that? The oh, yeah, here. Okay, 20 meters. So we got the work. We got the distance. Can't we find the force? Because work is force multiplied by distance, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Work done by the shopper is the force times D cos theta. doesn't matter here because theta is 0 degrees, so cos 0 is 1. 
So it's just 700 divided by 20. And I'm trying to show cos. Oh, here it is 25 degrees. I just forgot that he's not, look, he's applying a force at 25, isn't it? Yeah, okay. For a minute, I thought he was pushing it on level ground. Okay, so 38.6 newtons. 38.6 newtons. Force is work over d cos theta. Last one is the easiest. What's the total work done on the cart? It's already there. We have given the answer. Net force is, net work is zero. Yeah. The answer is already there. Net work is zero. Uh, how fast must a 3,000 kilogram elephant move to have the same kinetic energy as a 65 kilogram sprinter running at 10 meter per second? So you would find the kinetic energy of the sprinter first. Kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. It gives you You probably would not have done it this way, but I'm doing it. Okay, watch. If my thinking is right, most of you would have first found the kinetic energy of the sprinter, isn't it? I mean, that works. That's okay. That's fine. Once you get that, you put it equal to one-half times the mass of the elephant times the velocity squared. Did anybody get the answer that way? Yeah. What did you get? 1.5 meters per second. Okay. Now, what I did is, I just put them equal to each other. Doesn't the problem say they must be equal? Yeah. Doesn't it? Yes. And so I just put them so the halves can be cancelled out, and then I can directly get it, square root of, you got 1.6? We'll see. This is what I get from that. Substitute, put the numbers in, mass of the sprinter, 65 kilogram, mass of the elephant, 3,000 times the velocity of the sprinter is 10 square that. Oh, I forgot to put the square. I hope I calculated using the square. Did I? Oh, now I put it. Okay. So it's 1.47 meter per second. That's an easy problem. Isn't it? Yes. Now, because the elephant has a bigger mass, it just has to be moving at 1.47 to equal the kinetic energy of that tiny sprinter, I mean, compared to the mass of the elephant. That's the idea. And B says, discuss how the larger energies needed for the movement of larger animals would relate to metabolic rates. You know what metabolism is, don't you? The breaking down of the food to get the energy. Actually, all the energy that we have comes from the food that we eat. It's stored as chemical energy. Did you know that? And then we get it when the food is broken down. What do you say? Does the elephant need to eat much more than the sprinter? Yes. Of course. So if you are heavy, you got to eat more. That's what it shows. Well, nobody's as heavy as an elephant, hopefully. But the more your body mass, the more food you have to consume. That makes sense. Okay. Takes us to number six. How are cars built? Hey, what's the function of the bumper? Well, it's not to make it look so nice. Is the bumper supposed to come down during a crash? Supposed to break during a crash, tell me. Yes, yes. It's made of a material that will absorb the impact and break. So the force is not transferred to the driver or the passengers. And didn't you know that a car has crumble zones? Have you heard of crumble zones? Did you know that the engine would just drop down if there is a frontal crash? How many knew that? Let me see your hands. Oh, goodness. Otherwise, we'll die if you're inside. You know, the engine is supported in such a way that if there's a head-on crash, the first thing that happens is if the crash is over a certain limit, you know what I mean? 
if the clash is so much so that the bumper cannot absorb it, then what happens is the engine just drops down immediately. When it drops down, what do you have there? You have hollow metal, isn't it? What will happen to that? It will crumble, absorbing the impact. That makes sense? Otherwise, if the engine had stayed there, that is solid steel. If it had stayed there, it would transfer the force to you instead of absorbing it. That's what this problem is talking about, so try to do it. Come on. See, what's interesting is to note this. Look, how is it designed? What speed? Four kilometers per hour, that's all. You see that? So a bumper only saves you when you are having a crash in a parking lot. And if you're driving really slow, did you get that? Yeah. Not otherwise. The bumper cushions the shock by absorbing the force over a distance. Calculate the magnitude of the average force on a bumper that collapses by that much, which is 20 centimeters, right? 0.2 meter, while bringing a 900 kilogram car to rest from an initial speed of 1.1 meter per second. Who can give me the idea? Look, as soon as I see this, what's that? What is that? That's a speed. So what kind of energy does it have? Kinetic. If you bring it to stop, what happens to its kinetic energy when it stops? It's all gone, right? No, it doesn't turn into potential in this case. In this case, it turns into heat and sound. When there's a crash, because it's not going higher. Is it going higher? No. In this case, the bumper absorbs it. Don't you hear a sound there? And heat, so it takes it up. Okay, anyways, the kinetic energy becomes zero. Is that clear enough? It got transformed into other forms of energy. So, first thing you do is find the kinetic energy because we know it's actually called the work energy theorem. According to this theorem, work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. Work energy theorem. Net work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. That's what you see there. Watch. Network done. Isn't that, isn't that change in kinetic energy? Come on. That's the final kinetic energy. This is the initial kinetic energy. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So that will be the change in kinetic energy. But hold on. Don't we already know that uh, work done is given by force multiplied by distance? Don't we know that? So we can have two equations now. We know work done is Fd cos theta, so we put them both together. Put the two formulas equal to each other. And this is what you get. If you put the formulas equal to each other, we're trying to find force. Mass is 900. Of course, the final velocity is zero. Right? Yeah, okay, so the whole term is gone. Minus 900 times the initial is 1.1. Where did I get that? 1.12. In the question, is it 1.12? No. 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 Oh, please change it to 1.12 in the question. Because I added that 2 from there. So minus 2.8 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Ah! Now I changed it. I went back and scratched out the two. So which means I calculated without the two. Sorry for that. So why is the force negative? Is this an opposing force? Or is it a force that's helping you to move? Opposing, isn't it? That's why it's negative. It's an opposing work, opposing force. You know, this is not a silly question. Look at the force. Do you realize this is 2,800 newtons? That bumper just saved somebody's life. It took 2,800 newtons. That is about the weight of a man who has a mass of 280 kilograms. 
So you can understand, you know, that force is about the weight of a man who has a mass of 300 kilograms. So do you see that the force is big? In, our, in kilograms, our masses should be like 75 kilograms. You see that normal person, that's like 300 kilogram person falling on you. Won't work. I thought of that, but in the poem says... What the All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Suppose a 350 gram bird picks up a 75 gram snake and raises it 2.5 meters from the ground to a branch. It did say that clearly, didn't it? Yeah. From the ground to a branch. How much work did the bird do on the snake? So that part, it's only asking for the work done by the bird on the snake. Second part, how much work did it do to raise its own center of mass to the branch? Very clear. You have to do it separately. That's what it means, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. The A part, potential energy. MGH, and that is only for the snake, so 75 grams in kilograms. Wait, that's a mistake. Did anybody find out? It's 0 0.075. What am I doing? Okay, maybe I change it. If I don't, I'll change it now. It's, uh, oh, so I forgot right 0 0.075, but I actually use 0 0.075, correct? Is that what you're saying? Check it out. Check it out. Because 75 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.075. So somebody multiply 0 0.075 with this, with this. Are you, are you getting this? Yeah. Oh, so I just forgot right 0 0.075. Okay, so possibly in the end I might change when I notice it, if I do. So the work done to raise its own center of mass, MGH, now it's the mass of the bird. No, because it's saying how much work does it do to raise its own center, so it's only the bird. Oh, I changed it. See, did you see that I changed it to 0 0.075 somewhere? when I noticed. So that is 8.6 joules. When if there was a C part and that has you, what's the total work done? You would have done it clearly, isn't it? Total work done. Just add the two. That's easy. Lifting an object, MGH. Don't miss such chances, please. Yes. All right, this toy car thing here, it says it's a curved track, so I drew it that way. Is that right? Did it say it's curved? Okay. It's a curved track. It goes up. That's the height, and it, they told you that the height is 0 0.180 meter. In altitude, do you see that there? That's the height, altitude from the ground. It starts with, what's the initial speed? What? Two meters. Two meters per second, and then the final speed is... You have to show that the final speed is that much. Who can give me the idea for this? Actually, you don't need one half kx squared here. I just told you that, okay? You don't need it here. Hmm. How would you... What type of energy does this toy car have when it is at this point? Kinetic. Only kinetic, correct. But when it gets up there, what type of energy does it have? Kinetic. And kinetic. Did you see why? Because it, didn't, it did not stop. Because they say the final speed, it's still moving, isn't it? Okay. So initial speed, so how do you do it? First, find the kinetic energy here. Right? Then find the potential and the kinetic energy there. The sum of the two here should be equal to the kinetic at the bottom. Okay, let me show you. One and a half times mass times velocity initial squared should be equal to MGH plus the final kinetic energy. How many understood that? Let's see your hands. If you understood, thanks. You don't even need the mass of the car. I don't know why they gave you the mass. I cancelled out the mass. You don't need the mass. And you're asked to find the final velocity, so I made that the subject. 
Does anybody remember having seen this equation in kinematics? The final velocity squared. Come on, is equal to V naught squared plus 2 GH. You have seen it. It's there. Do you notice? Maybe 2AX or something. Yeah. yeah, G is A. G is nothing but acceleration, isn't it? And H is height. It's the same thing. You're going back and forth, same thing. When you substitute, okay, now, how many people know that square root can be written as raised to half? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So now, that's why you see raised to half. Okay, I was explaining that. Substitute, get it, and... That is what we were supposed to show, right? We got it. Final velocity is this, 0.687 meter per second. All right, question 9, uh, 5 times 10 to the power 5. Just notice that this is 10 to the power 5. Uh, kilogram subway train is brought to a stop from a speed of 0.5 meter per second in 0.4 meter by a large spring bumper at the end of its track. What is the force constant K of the spring? Now in this question of course the train because it's moving it has kinetic energy and as it hits the spring it compresses the spring and slows down and ultimately stops. This means that the kinetic energy that the train had becomes the potential energy of the spring. So the kinetic energy of the train is transformed into potential energy of the spring. And uh, 1 half kx squared is the potential energy of the spring should be equal to one half times mass times velocity squared, which is kinetic energy of the train, from which make K the subject, because you're looking for the spring constant, and here, of course, K is the spring constant, and mass is given, velocity is 0.5 square of that, divided by how much it's compressed is 0.4, again, square it. So when you calculate that, you get 7.812 times 10 to the 5 Newton per meter. And considering the significant figures, it's 7.81 times 10 to the 5 Newton per meter. Just notice that the unit of spring constant is Newton per meter. That means the force required to compress the spring or to extend the spring by one meter. That is what you mean by spring constant. Brings us to the tenth question. A large household air conditioner may consume 15 kilowatts of power. What is the cost of operating this air conditioner three hours per day? For 30 days, if the cost of electricity is $0.11 per kilowatt hour. Okay, so notice that uh, the unit here is a special one. It's kilowatt hours. So in this case, actually, you need not change time into seconds. You can keep it in hours. All right, and power is work over time or energy over time. And in this case, the power is given from which you can calculate the energy by rearranging it. Power is 15 kilowatts. Now, kilo is 10 to the power 3. But here you need not change it because we have to, you look, ultimately the unit that we need is kilowatt hour. 
So we'll keep it in kilowatts, but it's working for 30 days and 3 hours every day. So 30 days. It's only working 3 hours per day. Okay, so now I'm going to change that. That was a mistake. It's only working for 3 hours per day. Therefore, you get 1.35 times 10 to the 3 kilowatt hour. Because the day and the day gets cancelled. And you have the unit here as kilowatts. And here it's hour. So you get that new unit. And the cost would be, now simply multiply this with... Point one one zero. Point one one zero per kilowatt hour, right? So, so now you see that the units kilowatt hour and kilowatt hour gets cancelled. You get the answer in dollars, hundred and forty nine dollars, to use this air conditioner. For 30 days. Thank you and try to study these problems for exam number two.